welcome to a multitude of counselors. We're so thankful that you've joined us today for our program. It's going to be an awesome program because we're going to mm -hmm. talk about a relevant topic, and that is Christian dating, courtship, finding a life partner, and all those kind of things. So I want to start with a little bit of a history of Christian dating. Historically, dating really didn't exist. Marriage was a very functional thing. And you know that historically, many marriages were uh, determined by the parents. The parents matched the married couple. Mm -hmm. But then there's still some cultures in which that is active today. But marriage was always historically a very functional thing. Even in early Western culture, very functional, particularly before the Industrial Revolution. So let me give you an example. There was a man who put an ad in a paper to try to find a wife. And this is what he said. This is in the 1800s, and this is what he said. He said, this man was from Arkansas, so let me try to sound like him. He said, any gal that got a bed, calico dress, coffee pot, and skillet, knows how to cut out bridges and can make a hunting shirt, knows how to take care of children, can have my services till death do us part. So that man really didn't care about the relationship so much as he cared about how that woman functioned because it was all about survival. Well, the Industrial Revolution came along and it wasn't just about survival anymore. There was more leisure time, there was more money, more prosperity, people could actually think about relationships. So it was in that window of time that courtship really started to develop. And the way it looked initially was this, that the girl would sit in her parlor in her home with her family in other parts of the home, and the boy would come and visit with the girl in the parlor. This way the girl was protected by her family, they were within her shot, and the power balance was with the girl. But eventually the poor girls thought, well, I want to date their court too. And so they started to meet in public places. And often it was a restaurant or somewhere where there was something that needed to be purchased. And typically the male was purchasing. So the power balance shifted to the male. And in addition, the parents really didn't have as much to do with that relationship. Then beyond that, dating, as it came to be called, started to be about the thrill of the relationship, very focused in on the romantic thrill of dating, and less functional and less serious, less intentional. Christian dating pretty much followed that pattern until the purity movement and until a certain book came along in about 1997, a young man named Joshua Harris, 21 years old, wrote the book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye. And in that book, he recommended returning to the courtship model where the parents would have much authority over the relationship. The couple would restrain themselves from any kind of physical or emotional enmeshment during that courtship process. And they were very much focused on ascertaining whether that person was a suitable marriage partner. So it was very serious. Well, that went on for about 20 years. And then 20 years after the courtship revolution, you might call it, the author of I Kissed Dating Goodbye kissed the book, I Kissed Dating Goodbye, goodbye. And I want us to hear from him because he really had a process of thinking about what he put across in that book and what might have been some things that needed to be corrected. He said, in an article, I'm just beginning the process of revisiting the message and impact of my book. Over the years, I've heard from people who have been helped by the book, but I've also heard a growing number of voices of people who have been hurt by it. I want to understand this better. I'm starting by listening. Mm -hmm. Then in a TED Talks, he said, I gave the impression that there was really one formula you could follow and that if you follow that, you would be happily married, God would bless you, and you'd have a great sex life and marriage. Probably the thing that I regret the most was that there was a lot of fear inside me mm. and that fear transferred into my writing. Fear of messing up, fear of getting your heart broken, fear of hurting someone else, fear of sex. When I read that, I realized that he was identifying some of the things that I had experienced as flaws in the courtship model or maybe limitations in the courtship mm. model. But I want to say this, that I think the courtship model was an improvement on the dating model and I myself went through dating according to the world's formula and then went, went through courtship according to this formula and I married my husband after that kind of courtship and we're still married about a million years later. So something was working, but I would say it's more what we did after the marriage, which is I think true for everyone. 
But on the other hand, um, there are perhaps limitations or things that need to be corrected, but let's not start from scratch here. Mm -hmm. There are some really good things about the courtship model. I think the one thing for me that was missing was there was no opportunity to get to know the opposite sex mm -hmm. before a very serious relationship such as courtship. And so when I counsel young people, I say start out with friendship dating where you're just kind of enjoying getting to know different people in public places, not these very private situations where you might be tempted, Feels but nice. do get a variety of, uh, get to know a variety of people. Mm -hmm. I stumbled on an article that said basically the same thing by a man named Thomas Umstead, and he said that he was originally a courtship enthusiast, but his grandmother told him, that's silly. And he sat down with her to find out why, and she said, in my generation, there was one rule, you couldn't go out with the same person twice in a row unless you were ready for a serious relationship because going more than once with the same person was going steady. And I thought that was wise, that it's good to go out, get to know mm -hmm. people and get out mm -hmm. there. And yet um, we have to have some restraints. So our guests today are Jason and Natanya Vanderlyn. They're very special to me. They've been very recently, you know, discovered each other, met each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you call it courting or dating, whatever you did, but then they ended up married. So something worked out <laughs> and they're going to tell us that story. And it's so exciting because they met at one of my seminars. <laughs> so I get to take some credit. But I want to introduce uh, my panel today. I've got David Guerrero, biblical counselor, and Dr. Navishi Edwards, uh, professional counselor and university professor. And again, David, I'm sorry, David, <laughs> Jason and Natanya Vanderlaan. Did I say it right? Yeah, oh. Vanderlaan. And you're from where? Uh, we live in Burlington, Vermont now. Burlington, Vermont. Mm -hmm. So let's start with your story. Where did you guys meet? Well, I just told them where you <laughs> met, but, you know, take us from the beginning and let's, let's weave some of these ideas in. Totally. And I want to I wanna just start with this one thought. There's not any one particular formula that works perfectly for mm -hmm. each and every person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what I've come to. Yeah. I think biblical principles are always appropriate. They're mm -hmm. always in Amen. place. Mm -hmm. Restraints on human passion mm -hmm. are always necessary. And, but being filled with the Holy Spirit, he may lead one person in one direction, one mm -hmm. in a little bit different one. Let's not be formulaic about something as yeah. really um, dynamic as relationships. Good word. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. It's just so beautiful that we didn't plan this this way, but your, your history, mirrors so very much mm -hmm. our experience you mm -hmm. know Jason and I were coming from two very very different spaces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so tell us about it what what was your space like Jason so I definitely came from more of the purity movement mm -hmm. uh, mindset and I mm -hmm. related to a lot of that mm -hmm. um, and took not exactly the courtship approach but a lot of the principles from it um, what about it appealed to you I really appreciated that it caused me to look at my actions mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in the individual encounters that I had mm -hmm. and realize that they had longer impacts than mm -hmm. just that very moment. Mm -hmm. And where did you get that model from? Um, I read some books. I think I probably read I Kissed Dating Goodbye. <laughs> there was so many of them at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, they also had some people come to our school and okay. do purity conferences mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I just I did a lot of reading on my own okay. and discovered that. So you did research on your own. You were mm -hmm. reading and then you were putting together some, uh, you know, like like your own paradigm, yeah. right? And, yeah. and model. And you said, this is what I'm going to follow and, and everything's going to just be just fine. Yeah, yeah. Were there yeah. any that you went through some personal experiences and then had some background that made you really cautious about relationships? Yeah. I Not mean, that I want to blow you wide open. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it's, it's great that, you know, he, Joshua Harris talks about fear mm -hmm. of being a part of it and trying mm -hmm. to, like, protect himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of what drew me to the purity model was that it's like, oh, this is a foolproof formula mm. to not get hurt. Mm. And this seemed good at first. And then after the first, like, disastrously failed relationship, <laughs> then I was like, I really Oh, you did this. that with the courtship model? Yeah. The, the first disastrously failed relationship? You still relationship. failed? <laughs> yeah, I did. Still I did. what? Failed. Still failed. <laughs> you still failed. Um, and still got hurt. And then it was like even more so like, oh, I definitely don't want to experience this mm -hmm. again. Oh. And so you kind of like double down yeah. on, on a lot of those. And you were put on stricter? the full armor. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it sounds like it was more of your response to what didn't happen for you. Mm -hmm. And then it caused yeah. you to then put together, well, w what you shared was it caused you to even uh, tighten 
the ship. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting dynamic, as you said, because there's still certain parts of the model that I took value in and I found okay. to be inspiring, mm -hmm. and then other parts that you know I began to realize were inhibiting me from actually being able to experience intimacy in any form. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a weird another. thing for a vegetarian to say, but eat the meat and leave the bones. Right. <laughs> you know, really, there's yeah. some value there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that you came from a totally different headspace. Can you expand on that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so we both loved to read mm -hmm. um, coming up. I was very much inspired by the women's liberation mm. movement, and it wasn't even about dating at all, right? I wanted to express myself and I was reading all these incredible authors and I wanted to understand the why mm. oftentimes. And so I was introduced to I Kiss Dating Goodbye in school. Um, I went to like a traditional Bible school and the girls and the boys were separated for Bible class and I felt like there was a lot of shame involved in this teaching where Often it, it didn't even have a lot to do with the, the book, but the way, how do you dress? How do you behave? And so much of the weight was placed on, on your behavior. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel that it was very needy. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny because we were talking about um, dating and different dating philosophies and, and mm -hmm. the book title came up. And um, I wasn't sure how to tell Jason what my interactions with the book were, you know. What were your interactions with the book? I burnt it in the school parking <laughs> lot. <laughs> it, was, it was an act of early activism. <laughs> but, you know, actually, to be, to be totally honest, I wasn't very successful. It's hard to burn a book. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't entirely burnt. And it might not even have been that the book was so bad or no. some of the things, but it was the way that it was put across. Exactly. It was the way it was projected. Mm -hmm. To be totally fair, I think that there's a lot of value. So did you think when you told him you burned that book that he'd be like, oh, I don't want to be with you know, kind of thing? Maybe. I was a little uh -huh. apprehensive okay. because um, I didn't want to offend him. You know, we were just getting to know each other. And to be, I never even read the book. <laughs> it was it was more a symbolic gesture, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, what did mm -hmm. you feel when she? Said that? <laughs> um, I thought, okay, this might be interesting, <laughs> <laughs> but I had also, you know, come a long way from there where I could see why people mm -hmm. didn't like the book, yeah. mm -hmm. and I had experienced my own like reservations with certain aspects of it. Mm -hmm. like you guys were polar ends, it sounds like, yeah. in yeah. your philosophies. Yeah. How? Do you yeah. reconcile being together today, coming from those two worlds? If it had yeah. not been for the Lord <laughs> on our side. <laughs> Amen. Really, yeah. it was God and God alone that totally, through the power of the Holy Spirit and prayer. So get into the story. Fused our perception. Yeah. So do you want to start or do you want me to, babe? I can start. Okay. Yeah. So it would be easy, you know, to say that we got together and we worked out like a middle ground where our two views came Beautiful. together, but we didn't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the spirit was forging new ground and we were trying to keep up with him. Mm. That's really how we felt in, in our relationship. Well, can I start just yeah. a little part here? Yeah. Okay, so Jason and Natanya were at a seminar that I did. Now, mm -hmm. here's the background. Is it? I did the same seminar about 10 minutes from where Jason yep. lived in Philadelphia. He didn't make it to that one. Yeah, so he was before. determined to come to this one I did. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire was like six hours away. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the guy powered through. His battery failed. He made it up yep. there. He gets there, and then we're all at the seminar, and we're at J Natanya's parents that night. Yep. Sitting in the living room with Jason and everything, and you just couch surfed, I think, to yeah. find someone to stay with. Anyway, you went through a lot of hardship to get there, and then, and I'm thinking, why is this guy so motivated to come to my measly little seminar? <laughs> We're sitting in the living room, and all of a sudden, I'm looking back and forth between the two of them, going, "That's, That's why." why. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know he didn't even know her. He didn't even know she was up there. Had so you saw the spark even before they. I connected. saw that, and then I, and then within yeah. like a few weeks, I see this stuff on Facebook, and I'm like. Wow, God did something here. So anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to filibuster your oh, no. story, but go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely it. And you saw something, and we believe, you know, God, when he saw us meet, was smiling because he knew what was up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had, we, no we had no idea. I thought that, I looked at the two of you, and I know both of you, and I'm like, yeah. they'd be perfect for each other. Yeah. They're perfect. Wow. Yeah. Well, so when, you know. when did you become aware that there was something? What happened? It wasn't until about two months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, I had been given a book that I wanted to, it was a prayer challenge, 40 days. I wanted to do it with someone and I couldn't find anyone in the world to do it with. And finally in frustration, I said, God, who do you want me to do with this book with? 
and very clearly it was Jason. You know, we lecture God. I said, oh, but Lord, that would be very irresponsible. I've already <laughs> friend zoned him. And you know, it's funny. <laughs> In retrospect, we both thought that the other was like not our type. Mm. Mm. Like, oh, she's nice, but eh. We saw a lot of obstacles. Like, on exactly. paper, we looked, we looked at our lists individually and we were like, it's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, but God knew better. So yeah. we got started and you know, it was short little prayer exercises every day. Maybe so you were going through a prayer book, like yes. a prayer challenge book. 40 and days. Together? On the phone. Yes. Okay. Yes. On the phone. Yeah, well, who, the phone. did you ask him if he would Yes. Through the book with yeah, I <laughs> asked him if he would do it with me, and it's actually kind of funny the way it worked out because I was still like very reluctant. God told me like maybe this would be a good idea. I said no, God, I don't think so. And then that night, that was maybe the third time we'd ever spoken on the phone. Jason starts asking me questions about prayer because he knows I'd done prayer seminars and workshops, and it was like my thing. And I was like, oh man, this is a sign from the Lord. So I suggested that he do it by himself. <laughs> 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 but two days later. Um, we spoke again. I said, actually, I have the book. So. Uh, and I got on Amazon Prime and two day shipping. I had the book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we were right. ready to go. And what was supposed to be 10, 15 minutes a day turned into well over an hour. Mm. We were having to change our schedule. And talking about like prayer and meeting in the middle, I didn't come from a space where I was creating healthy boundaries in my relationships. And I was praying about it. I said, Lord, this is new. Um, what boundaries would you have for me? Mm -hmm. And you know, God is funny. He says, well, you can talk to Jason only half as much as you talk to me. So huh. I was changing mm. my schedule entirely where there were days where I would wake up early and I'd be praying for like three hours so that I could have an hour and a half meeting <laughs> to talk to him. And it was really amazing how everything unfolded. It was only five days before we knew that you know, this was something of God. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it ended on his birthday, 40 days in, and just four what days after. It ended on his birthday? The 40 days oh, of prayer. Oh, 40 days, okay. Fourth, ended yeah. on his birthday. Not the relationship. No, 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 no. <laughs> <Happy> birthday, <Jason. laughs> It's over. Yeah, it's important to clear up. Yeah. And, and he proposed to me. On his birthday. No, four days four after. Days after. Oh, four days yeah, after. Yeah, remind you, yeah. we were living well, over six prayer, hours apart. His birthday, mm -hmm. 40 days of prayer, mm -hmm. his birthday, and then the proposal. Yeah. Yep. All in all, we dated just shy of a month. Was there a point where you decided you were dating and told the world that you were a couple or no? It just sort of happened? Yeah, it was maybe a couple weeks into the book. I went up and visited her. Uh, I drove up from Philly to Vermont mm -hmm. and we had, we had, we were pretty sure by that point, but you know, I just want to actually like meet together in person again <laughs> and like. What was that drive that. like from Philly to Vermont? Well, oh. <laughs> I'm just curious. So as <laughs> we can kind of see on a lot of these things, I'm, I'm a very cautious and methodical person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very eager to get there. I got my first speeding ticket ever <laughs> on that trip. Like an hour words, never from speed around. normally. Yeah, this, well, never. I never get caught. <laughs> <laughs> so the woman who's driving across the country with Jason. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so your story is amazing. Yeah. And there may be people in the audience wondering, well, how do you know? Like you, you talk yeah. about hearing God and yeah. having assurance and having the affirmations based on your different mm -hmm. experiences. Yeah. But how do, how do you say to somebody, I knew because? Yeah, mm -hmm. good question. That is yeah. a good question. You know, I had, I had a plan for how I would know. And my plan was like a five-year plan. Of course, because Meet you're methodical. Girl. Yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the girl, you were gonna get date to know for her five for years? a year. Oh, I see. Date for two years, uh -huh. engaged for two years. And you're married, it's great, it's perfect. Yeah. And somewhere along that line, you it turned to you forty days. Feel, yeah. <laughs> you feel. I would imagine that I would feel very strongly about my decision, mm -hmm. and then I would ask God for mm -hmm. some confirming sign, mm -hmm. and He would help me out somehow, and I would do it. But obviously, that's not how it worked out at, at all. This time. <laughs> and so, I don't know. We found ourselves praying together. Yeah, that's and key. It was like every day, like she was saying, we were praying before we met together for you know maybe an hour or two each. And the things that God was revealing to me, he was revealing to her. And so when we would share together, everything was just aligning mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And yeah. it felt like every day was a revelation that we were supposed to be together. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know if this really answers your question, because it's really hard to give a formula. A concrete know. answer. Did you yeah. counsel yeah. with your parents? Was there some involvement? <coughs> yeah, What definitely. was the nature of it, too? Like, was it like... 
veto power or <laughs> so advice and blessing or what? That was another affirmation for me personally. Mm -hmm. I'm very close to my parents mm -hmm. and my, my poor father, we'd had a conversation shortly before all this mm -hmm. where I told him that marriage was a case of pick your poison. You know, I just I was very cut and dry. And that, like, you talk to me about that. A case of really picking your poison. Picking your poison. Mm -hmm. So it works yeah. better for some than others. <laughs> And, you know, hopefully you get better odds, but really nobody's perfect. We're all human. We're yeah. all going to fail and disappoint each other. So hopefully you get something that's a little less painful. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And so he was using that as an illustration in sermons. My father's a minister. <laughs> it, it was difficult. And then fast forward, I, I call him on the phone. I said, Daddy. I'm in love with Jason. I think I'm going to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say? That's poison? <laughs> no, no, actually, he all. was no. putting his suit jacket on to go on the platform to preach. He says, can we talk about this another <laughs> time? <laughs> but um, he gave his blessing. Yeah. He gave his blessing. My nice. mom gave her blessing. And it was so assertive mm -hmm. from their point that I, I was like, this is God. Because I know how much what they love me. What do you mean me. assertive? They were, they were very affirmative. It was very strong, like, short yes, answer. Yes, yes. Definitely, this is great, even though it was quick. Yeah. And you wouldn't expect that they, normally. From exactly. Your My mother. Had they met Jason? Yes, they had okay. met Jason actually at Jennifer at Jill's <laughs> um, <laughs> seminar. Mm -hmm. So it was a brief meeting. And so they saw something in him too. No. <laughs> <laughs> My, my mother was trying to hook Jason up with one of my friends. Okay. Just very, very honest. Like, it, it was Just out thinking of the this blue. this would never work. Yeah. Did but they saw in him a them? nice young she man. I would eat him alive. <laughs> <laughs> Her words. So you're going to eat this man alive. But they saw in him a nice young man. They, they saw yeah. Jesus in him. Mm. There you, you go. You know, and I see Jesus in him every day. Mm. And if I could give advice to our young people, like we were both looking for Jesus mm. and we didn't stop until we found him. Mm. And, and that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. So when you say you're both looking for Jesus, can you expound on that? Were you looking for Jesus in each other or looking for Jesus asking him for his divine guidance or both? Yeah, well, I think I th both. Okay. Yeah, I think I was looking for always a fuller and fuller experience of Jesus. Mm -hmm. For yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. first. And okay. wanting to to partner with him in every aspect Amen. of life. And mm -hmm. that included marriage mm -hmm. and that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so one of the key moments for me was after we had b began praying together, um, we started praying at every conversation mm -hmm. we have, not just our quote unquote prayer time. And if we were trying to make a decision together, mm -hmm. we would pray about it. And like just this part of inviting Jesus into like 24 seven part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is what I've always wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I've, I had other relationships that, you know, it was good cultural Adventist experience, but mm. it wasn't like a holistic, mm. fully mm -hmm. dedicated experience. Mm -hmm. and I found that in her. Mm -hmm. and what really what saw. would you say to young people that feel the urge to find a life partner? And what would you say to them? Would you say? Find Jesus, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's first and foremost, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. because not everybody's going to find a life partner. That's the reality of the situation, yeah. or an appropriate life oh, partner. Christ. So, what would you say to them? Like, if someone's like, "I really want to be married," what, what's your response? And I'm sure you address this because aren't you doing? And we'll get into this in the second mm -hmm. half. The ministry that God is bringing yeah. out of your marriage. Amen. And I'm sure you're getting questions like this. So, what's the nutshell answer that you give in two minutes or less? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds a little cliche, but like really dedicate to getting to know Jesus Amen. first. And that doesn't mean like you're saying you can't have friendship dating. You can't get to know a variety of people and, and learn your dislikes and likes. Mm -hmm. But really, like as we experienced, we had, we, I mean, we were both around 30 years old. We knew our dislikes and likes. And yet when we compared ourselves to each other, we thought this is not going to work. It's not mm -hmm. a good match but it was only through prayer mm. that we could see as God saw. Yeah. And he was like, you guys are perfect for each other. Yeah, compatibility so is not necessarily sameness. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, as we continued to get to know each other and pray, our eyes were open to see, wow, we are perfect for each other. Mm. This is yeah. like really amazing. Yeah. 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 Do you think that someone's desire to find a partner is sufficient reason to approach it in an intentional way? Because 
I kind of lean that way. Like if you feel like God is calling you to a partnership, be intentional about it mm -hmm. and tr put yourself in situations where you may meet someone. Don't hide in your room. This is what <laughs> some people do. God yeah. is going to bring me someone. Yeah. I think that's unrealistic. However, yeah. with the advances of modern technology today, you can meet people them in can your own meet them. <laughs> and, you know, Through a dating website. <laughs> but what I'm hearing is also that there was some intentionality in what you both did. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just did it through prayer and mm -hmm. seeking God and His mm -hmm. face and inviting Christ to the process. Mm -hmm. And we all have to uh, be intentional mm -hmm. in doing that in our lives with everything. And very importantly with dating or and it sounds when you're like seeking you, a life mate. You kind me. of relinquished yeah. yourself of your pre Dispositions. Conceived ideas yeah. and yeah. philosophy. Totally. Yeah. There was an incredible amount of trust mm -hmm. in this yeah. space. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's time for a quick story. Uh, yeah, go for it. So we're dating, newly, newly dating, and we decide, you know, Canada's only an hour and a half away. So we go on a wonderful um, date in Canada, and <laughs> we're coming back across the border, and you know you have those quiet moments in the evening where you're both tired, you had a full day, and out of nowhere, Jason looks over at me and he's just like, you know, God has called you to Vermont. I believe it. And I'm willing to leave everything. Right now, at that point, he was very engaged in ministry, um, working with Reach, and uh -huh. he had a lot of things in going on. In Philadelphia, yeah. Totally. He said, I'm willing to leave all of that to come and be where God has called us to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, were you engaged at that point? Or? No. 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 Wow. No. And that I, could have been either like, great, or uh-oh. You know? <laughs> no, but that realization hit him real time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's looking at me, and it's dark, so it's kind of forgiving. But the tears just start streaming wow. down his face. Someone's willing to sacrifice for you. He's leaving his family. He's leaving his friends. He's leaving everything for me. And I think mm -hmm. no greater love than this, mm -hmm. than a man mm -hmm. you know, would lay down his life. You know, for his friends, for his, for his love, yeah. you know? Amen. Oh, I love it. And in the second segment of this program, Prayer Partners Become Life Partners, we're going to go into how that sacrificial love really enables a couple to get through the difficulties of marriage. Everybody has difficulties in marriage, and really what makes a marriage is what happens after the altar. We're so glad that Jason and Natanya did some really cool things and followed Jesus before the altar, but they're going to get into the nuts and bolts of what life is like with two sinners living under one roof and how to resolve that conflict. Please join us for that program. We look forward to seeing you.